Hello guys and welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. Today I will be presenting 5 tips for beginners or intermediate people using uh, ZBrush. Uh, they're basically a few fundamental things that everybody should uh, probably know. Uh, so w w one of them is going to be about polygroup creation and how you can use the transpose smart brush to basically mask areas of your mesh very easily and then create polygroups out of them. Another tip about how to use poly paint uh, while you're doing your sculpt to basically help in, uh, um, you know, in the, in the process of uh, using substance painter. So for example, you can transform the poly paint into a vertex color ID. Uh, the next tip is about how you can use the morph target for creating shapes on your mesh without them overlapping. Uh, another tip about how to extract geometry from your mesh, uh, let's say you want to do some um, clothing for your character so you can use its actual body to create a, to extract the geometry from that mesh in order to then make your clothing uh, a geometry around that. And then the final tip is going to be about how to use the uh, array mesh to create some duplicate uh, parts of your geometry and then you can rotate or scale or move them around the environment um, and that's that tip is going to basically go through through that uh, so i hope you guys enjoy um, and uh, you know if you like uh, if you like this video please like it if you want to subscribe for more please do and uh, with no uh, further delay let's uh, begin if you want to create uh, multiple polygroups, but you got uh, different shapes on the, on the mesh, like for example, you've got an incision right here in the, let's say you've got an incision in the forehead. And um, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna mask it. And now if you press control W, that will basically create a polygroup on it. As you can see by pressing shift F, you can see the wireframe and now you can see the polygroup. But let's say that you haven't created, so let, let's say you've, you've, uh, you've done the, the masking um, and you press W for the transform gizmo. You invert the mask by click by pressing Control and clicking on the canvas. And now you send this selection inwards. Okay, just like that. And now we take the if you press Control W now to create polygroups. So now it's created a poly. You know, it's created a difference a different polygroup between the outer surface and the surface inside. But also in between, you can see over here how it sort of blends in, which is not what we want. So if you want to have clear polygroups right now, what you need to do is let's uh, control, let's undo that so we can, so we basically remove the polygroup. And let's uh, uh, control drag on the canvas to, uh, you know, make the, the mask disappear, to, to deselect the mask. And now what we want to do is we go into, tr up here into the brush settings, we make sure we have transpose smart selected and now when we press control keep control pressed and now we go onto this mesh and we drag out you can see how we create a mask based on these faces now if you press keep control and shift press at the same time and then you drag again you can make a different selection and you, you have to do this in order to not have your uh, mask sort of going over on top of the on top of the mesh because you can, if you just keep on dragging so if you if you keep on dragging like that this is what's going to happen so you can you can't really do that you just have to be you know selective with the areas uh, drag and then drag again until you get the result that you want so once you have selected everything so let's say we've done that and you know we just We've got this. Oh, sorry about that. Um, we've got this fine, almost this final piece here to do. Um, just a little bit uh, awkward with the with the with the shape that we've got. Um, yeah. So let's just say that's about right. You get the idea, right? This can be done. So now, if I press Control W and Shift F again, you can see the polygroup, and it's a you know it's a clear polygroup there, right? That almost exactly at the edges um, and then you can do the same thing for the outer outer part um, so basically you, you can you can go around you can you can go about and, and do this as well on the outside again with the with the trans with the transpose smart gizmo uh, so you can see how we're, we're doing it again you, you can select all these all these shapes make sure that your transpose mask doesn't go in 
and let's, I don't know, let's say that this is about what we wanted and we press again, control W. And if we look, we have created another polygroup and so on. And, and you can do this as many times as you want. And Transpose Smart is one of the best tools in order to achieve very clean and very fast results. And then once you have all these polygroups, you can use Zebra Mesh with keep groups on to get a clear edge. And that's what, that will definitely help with the process overall. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tip and on to the next one. A useful tip, uh, when you do your sculpting, you may also want to use polypaint at the same time to basically uh, polypaint the details that you're adding in on the mesh. This is very useful when you take the mesh into Substance Painter, for example, and you want to use the polypaint as a vertex color ID, which is then going to help you with using a black mask and a color picker in order to add some details to very specific spots. So for example, I mean, in order for us to, to do that, what we want to do is we want to go into color and then press fill object. And now it's filled the object with whatever color we had selected down here. Now, if we change the color to, let's say, green, and then we go with our clay buildup selected, we make sure that RGB or MRGB channel are both active. When we start uh, sculpting, you can see how it applies the poly paint as well. Um, if we deselect RGB uh, entirely, then basically we'll only be doing sculpting without adding any color. If we press M, the material channel, then again we won't be doing any, we won't be adding any any color. Um, there's um, there's another way to just add the color without doing any sculpting, which is to switch our brush to paint, and now we all, we're only painting without adding any sort of sculpt to the mesh. Um, so again, this is a very useful tip. In order, this is going to save you tons of time if you if you're planning on putting this into into ZBrush, uh, sorry, into Substance Painter, and then paint over just these details. For example, you can do color picker and just select the green color. Um, there's uh, make sure that the RGB intensity is to 100. Otherwise, you won't be able to get a clear uh, color for your color picker. Um, so yeah, I hope this uh, proves useful, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Next tip. If we select a chisel brush and we want to basically start dragging and drop, uh, dragging new shapes on our mesh, uh, what, what will happen is we will start to see overlapping uh, objects the moment we lift our mouse or uh, our um, pen from the mesh. So basically the shapes will just overlap on one another, just thus increasing the height of every time we add a new uh, part to it. So in order to not have this problem, we can go into Morph Target and press Store Morph Target. And now, as you can see, when we drag again, you can see how both of these, uh, you know, all these uh, shapes are now blending in with each other, thus creating a seamless transition and not adding any more height to our mesh, which this is very useful uh, because doing it the other way, as I've said, it just means that it's going to create the same effect over and over on top of each other, thus ruining the, the normal uh, effect that we want to achieve. Um, so you can see it again over here, how it's overlapping again. Definitely not what we want. So if I store the uh, morph target and now I start to drag the shape again, you can see how both, you know, all these shapes are overlapping, especially if, if they are, the, sorry, they're not overlapping, they're blending. Uh, especially if they're not, um, if they're of the same size. I've deactiva deactivated the morph target, and again, you can see how the overlap happens. If you want to create an object and you want it to spin around, let's say, the center point of your scene, uh, for example, this human head is exactly in the center, uh, all we're going to do is we're going to append a, ge uh, a geometry, an arrow, and then we're going to move the arrow, uh, you know, on the side of the object, and then we're going to lean the arrow towards the object. Now we want this arrow to go around the uh, the object uh, another three times in order to basically to point out at the uh, top of the head. In order to do this, we're going to use the array uh, array mesh uh, option. We'll, we'll activate it by pressing it. And then we're going to tell it to repeat four times uh, this object. Now, if we now go into, um, you know, if we actually try to do this right now, basically the object will be replicated where it is. So we've just activated rotate, and now we're going to go to the Y amount. As you can see, as I as I increase this, it will create three other. 
uh, object of the arrow, um, but it will rotate uh, around its own axis. So if we go and uh, lock the position and then reset, uh, now, if we go to rotate again and we start rotating, you, uh, we start rotating again. You can see how the object spins around the uh, center of the uh, of the world of the canvas. Uh, so that's the pivot point. So I'm just going to put it at 360 degrees, and also I'm going to tell it to repeat four times again. And you can clearly see how we've got now four arrows pointing at the uh, human head. Uh, also very important that only the primary object right now is an actual um, mesh. So if we deactivate array mesh, then they, 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 those disappear. So if we press make mesh, now it's going to convert those uh, four arrows into actual uh, geometry. So now the, the pivot point is still on the main object, but we can reset that by pressing uh, the, uh, that op the option. Uh, on the screen and now we can you know try and start and align it if we want rotate it around um, you know you can move this you can do whatever you want just like, um, like like you would normally do to any sort of mesh that you've created so this is a very easy and uh, fast way of just generating replicas of your of one of your models and just moving it around the scene and uh, again, you can uh, you can clone this as many times as you want using the ar array mesh. So I hope you found this useful, and I'll see you in the uh, next tip. On this next tip, if we want to create uh, generate a layer, uh, extract a layer from a from a mesh, all we have to do is we mask the area that we want to extract uh, by holding Control and, and masking the area, and then we just press the extract button which will then extract our uh, mask uh, and, and we can use this, this as a different object. Once we press accept, this will create a new object in our sub tool and you can see it over here. Uh, so now we've got basically the face of the female head extracted from the mesh. Uh, we, we can then um, deselect the mask and then we can now play around with this uh, new uh, you know, the new mesh that we just uh, created. This is very useful, especially if you want to create, uh, for example, clothing for your characters, because you can use their own body anatomy to basically create uh, clothes out of it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please like and subscribe if you did, and I'll see you in the next tutorial video that I'll be uploading soon. Uh, thank you guys for uh, being such a uh, um, you know, a great community and uh, I'm almost at the 100 subscribers mark. Uh, hopefully we can grow this a lot more and uh, thank you for your support.